Today is March the 30th, 2016, and I want to show you a, uh, an antenna that I've recently built. Got it up yesterday. Well, actually, I got it up a few days ago, but I had to pull it back down uh, to uh, make some connections a bit tighter because the wind here in El Paso has been really brutal lately. What it is, it's a rotatable dipole. I'll show you these pictures first, and then I'll go ahead and show you my my thoughts on it. There's a, a little choke up there, a little uh, air choke, whatever you want to call it. It's oftentimes referred to as a ballon. It's not really a balanced to unbalanced transformer, but it does serve that purpose. That little string hanging down there, I will cut off later. I have to climb back up there with a knife out on the end of a of a stick and cut it off. So that's a little unsightly at the moment, but it's not harming anything. Let's see if we can, how close we can get here with the camera. There we go. You can see where it's, uh, the coax is connected. Uh, the, the center element, the center of the coax is connected to the left side and the shield is connected to the right side. That's a nine foot piece of, uh, it's actually called RG9BU. But it's just 50 ohm coax. It's just a really high quality uh, double shielded, silver plated uh, shielder at it. And then it comes straight down. There's a uh, the rotor. Uh, now, I realize I don't have any front to back. The front is the same as the back. But it does give me a good four to five S units of attenuation off the ends out here in that direction. Right now it's pointed south, north and south at the same time. I love it. This thing is so superior to that G5 RV that I had that uh, there, it, it's hard to compare. It's up uh, the, the top of the tower, at the, right there at the bottom of the um, of the rotor is that's 30 feet. Uh, it's lifted about two feet up in the air on, on some cement, so I guess I've got it up close to 35 feet. So let's go inside and uh, I'll show you some of my thoughts on it and, and what I've done. The way that I determine the length of the uh, element is by the old formula 468 divided by the frequency in uh, megahertz. Or if you, uh, 468, 468, or if you want to use inches, you just multiply that times 12, you get 5616. You divide that by, I cut it for 14.25, uh, 14.25, that gives me 394.11 inches. I'm just going to do it in inches and, and let my uh, European friends that do metric system uh, figure this out. I know that uh, it's pretty easy to convert. And you divide that by two and you get uh, the, the length on each side. Now there is one little thing that I have found important. I've made a lot of antennas in my life and I've found that uh, what you need to do if you're making it out of something besides wire is you have a uh, a length to diameter ratio and here is a uh, a chart I don't know what I got this out of but I thought it was so important I, I made myself an extra copy and laminated it it's called a graph of element diameter versus length well it's one and one eighth inches and then it tapers down a little bit to one inch this is an OD and then it tapers down to another one which I don't remember all of these dimensions but anyway I estimated the estimated it at one inch so I have a ratio of um, one inch to 394 well I call that 401 and if you look here on these charts a ratio length in di a ratio uh, let's see ratio of length to diameter see it's a logarithmic chart Two, one hundred, two hundred, four hundred, right there, and you go out to here, then you get about 0.95. So you want to shorten it about five percent because of its uh, uh, diameter to length ratio. So you, if you shorten this to 0 0.95, you say 0 0.95 times, that'd be 374.4 inches. And divide that by two. And that's what it is on each side, 187.2 inches. That's what I got right here, 187.2 inches each side. That's the way I did it. And there's Miss Kitty Cat coming around to check my numbers. So uh, th that's that's the 
length on, on each side. Uh, I'll have to go get, uh, get some of the parts and I'll show you what I used as an insulator and it turned out uh, really nice. But that's where I determine the length and I've done this a number of times with Yagi's which I've built quite a few of in my life. Never keep them a long time, I don't know why. I move or decide to make them better and then end up messing them up or something. <laughs> I don't know. But this one I'm, I'm really pleased with. I've got it on an old rotor over here. Uh, right here. I mean this, this thing is ancient, but it still works. Uh, one of the things you might be interested in, this, is cut, this wire right here that I use is 10 conductor. Uh, they use it for uh, sprinkler systems. Irrigation, irrigation wire. I can get it at Lowe's. It's 10 conductors. So what I did is, you know, it takes two wires uh, to unlock the brake, which needs to be larger. So I put two of them parallel uh, and uh, two more parallel so that I got uh, larger wire. Number 18, two number 18 wires parallel gives you the equivalent of a number 15 wire. I know that's a little bit of an odd number. Uh, like two number 18s don't give you a 16 or a 14. It's a logarithmic scale. Wire size is a logarithmic scale. So two number 18s parallel gives you a number 15. You can look, look all this up on uh, easy enough in the American wire gauge charts. So that's what I used and the, the wire, this rotor wire wasn't too expensive. And from here to the rotor is about 130 feet and it works real good. Watch it turn here. This works really nice. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I was just in Cuso with a gentleman up in Iowa. Uh, I'm running the uh, running this thing uh, with the amplifier off the old S line here, and it was it's just doing marvelous. Like I say, it greatly outperforms my G5 my G5 RV Junior. I've already taken the G5 RV Junior down, and it just so happens that the night that I was on late um i did have some contacts i'll show you right here uh, i've just started using the qrz um website and um i had uh, two contacts oh goodness i don't know i don't want to i don't want to fumble too much and find it well one of them was from ukraine one was from uh, Br brazil um I have to fumble too much. I'm, I don't use this for often enough to uh, to find um, to find things easily. I was looking for my oh logbook right there. Yeah, yeah. I see right there a uh, uh, UW2M and a uh, PX2B in Brazil. The other guys are you know local or more local stuff, but um, those were the two contacts I made that night. It was an exceptional. I, I think it just seems like uh, all of the, the spirits conspired to uh, to help me that night to, to uh, see how well it worked. But let, let's get back to the to the uh, details of, of the amplifier. I've got to go get a part and I'll show you uh, what I used to uh, separate it and and my thoughts on the uh, the, the choke. Here's the centerpiece of the antenna. This is uh, an exact duplicate of what I have up there where the uh, tubing, uh, half, one half of the element goes this way, the other half this way, and then you, uh, you connect together. Uh, you connect the electrical point uh, through these screws right here. And the uh, coaxial choke that I use is nine feet. Of, I believe this is 9913 you know just a good quality RG8 type whatever you choose now I've seen a number of articles and videos on these air chokes and they seem to say that anything random between 10 and 20 feet is good and it probably is I don't really know if mine are any better for uh, what I build them for but just a random length of wire, I know I'd never be satisfied with it. So uh, I 
I posted a video sometime back about why I choose nine feet and um, it's just for 20 meters and uh, it works great and, and I can prove it we'll go down in the basement here in just a second where I've uh, taken that uh, general radio RF bridge and uh, we'll actually measure it that's the fun part I'll show you how it turns out okay we're going to use the uh, this GR 916 what is this a 916A I believe it is impedance bridge I've got the um, transformer in it for the 3 to 60 megahertz beautiful instrument I love this thing uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting in just the tiniest of signal as I can into the input what I'm using is this little uh, Tintec Argosy right there and I've got it uh, the RF uh, output turned all the way down to zero it still puts out a, the tiniest amount and I put it in CW mode so I get a little bit of drive and then I've got my uh, receiver over here tuned to 14.250 and you'll see what that does here let's see if we can watch this thing if I can stay out of the way and at the same time show you how it works I'm going to put in some carrier you hear that, of course. Then we uh, set this to zero. We set this to 5,000, and it's a capacity. I've already checked all of this stuff, so I've already gone through this. You set this one to uh, 5,000. You set this one to zero, and then you null it. You can null it all the way down to hear the crickets. Well, let's see. I still hear it a little bit. Okay, I think I got it there. Then, you take... It's going to get really loud. Take this thing off. And hook the antenna to it. Now, without touching these again, you... you make your measurements. Hey, that's about as low as that one will go. Then we do the reactance part. I think that's about as close as I can get. Now I still hear a little bit. Anyway, I'm splitting hairs now. And then, um, this thing's a little complicated to read. Uh, kind of important to see it though. So I want you to, you're probably not going to get to see too many people use one of these things on YouTube. So, you null it at 5,000. And then you null this one at zero in the capacitance range. And the inductance range, you null it at zero. Now, the way you determine the amount of reactance in the capacitance mode is you take the number that's on there, which is like 4,600, and you subtract it from 5,000, you get 400. And then you divide that 400 by right here. See, it says divide reading by frequency in megahertz. And then this one is a direct readout of about 27 ohms. Well, here it is right here. It's 27 ohms. And once you do the uh, 400 divided by 14.25, uh, uh, you get 28.07. So what you get is 27 ohms minus J28. It means it's a little bit capacitive. And if you do uh, a scalar Z, it's this squared plus this squared and the square root of that, which is 39 ohms. And if you compare 39 ohms to um, your 50 ohm coax at this end, I realize that we're always trying to adjust the antenna, but I can't get all this equipment up there. I get 1.28 down here. At 1.3, I get 25 ohms minus J10. That's an SWR 1.85, and at 14.2, I get the same thing. 14.2 and 3, I get the, the same. Well, the SWR 1.28, it's a little bit lower. But anyway, yeah, these two are the same. 
from 14.2 to 14.25. 14.3 it starts rising a little bit. Maybe it goes down a little bit better below 14.2. I don't know. I'm not really concerned because um, I use a uh, an antenna tuner to, to tune that little bit of reactance out and I get 50 plus J0. I'll show you that out of a, another little instrument I built. I hope it's down here so I have to go chase that thing down again. And uh, a little RX bridge that, that you might like. Okay. Lastly, I think here, here's a little RX bridge I built a long time ago. I believe I got these dials off of, uh, I think off of an old Heath kit uh, instrument. And I uh, painted them and, and renumbered them to suit myself here. I'll show you the schematic in a minute. It's pretty simple. And uh, we just dial these things in till we get a null. I will say if I had to do this over again, I would probably use a little bit, uh, probably use like a one milliamp meter movement. This is a 20 microamp. See, 20 micro, and it's real sensitive, almost too sensitive. Picks up a little bit from the antenna, but anyway, let's keep going here, and then we start uh, measuring the R and the X. Yeah, making sure you're in the camera, and we end up very carefully here because the meter is very very damped okay I think I got it I think I, I can quit okay see it measures about somewhere between 22 and 33 ohms I believe you can read that we'll call that 25 to 27 and then it has a capacitor of 500 picofarads that's the equivalent of what it would take so we get about the same number we did a while ago, somewhere halfway between 22 and 33, 22, um, it would be like 5 more, 5 to 6 more, so if you had 5 to that, it would be 27 to 28 ohms. A while ago at 14.250, we got 27 out of the, out of the nice GR, and uh, the capacitor would be the equivalent of 500. Uh, the reactance would be that of a 500 picofarad capacitor. Now we have to, we actually have to do X sub C to get that one. I know this stuff is crazy, but uh, that's uh, 1 over 2 pi FC. That's 2, enter, um, pi times F uh, 14.25 E6 times 2 pi FC 500 E 12 change sign time reciprocal 22 ohms so in this case we get uh, 27 minus J 22 27 minus J 22 let me write that down 27 minus J 22 that's what we get uh, with our little with our little homemade meter and that uh, with the uh, nice GR, we get 27 minus J, 28. Pretty good, huh? For a little simple RX bridge. And here's the, here's the schematic of it. You can find these things online. I hope this thing is focusing. This is that pot. It's a 100K linear pot. You, you need to... Uh, when you build it in there, you need to put it up on, on the little plastic insulators and put a plastic uh, uh, shaft to it. You, you want to insulate it as best you can, isolate it as best you can to minimize the stray capacitance. Uh, this is a 250 picofarad capacitor, and this one right here is exactly half. That's what makes it balance right smack in the middle. So whatever this one is, this one is half. So you have to play with them. And instead of a 100 ohm resistor here, I used actually a 1 milli Henry um, choke. And that's it. Yeah, you can look these things up. Oh yeah, this little coil right here was, was I had to build that thing several times. I remember that as long as it's been. I don't have a date on here. This is probably back in the 80s. 
and I used three number 28 wires and I twisted them tightly and I wrapped five turns around a little, I set a small toroid core, I didn't use a toroid core, I did it one time but I ended up changing it to one of those little um, powdered iron cores out of a um, uh, you know like out of a slug I'll show you inside I believe I, yeah I believe I took the screws out of the back so this thing works pretty good it's only good up to really good up to um, about 20 megahertz but it, it'll do all the HF bands you know up to 15 meters it won't do 10 I believe I yeah I believe I took the screws out so I get this thing off in case you really interested in building one of these things see this capacitor right there is the one that's exactly half of this variable one and there's that little transformer it's about six inches of three pieces of uh, number 28 wire about six inches long twist them together with a drill and then distribute them out according to the uh, schematic there's that little uh, one millihenry instead of the hundred ohm there's a capacitor across and two diodes too you know help make sure I don't blast my uh, meter anyway there's that thing one and a half volt max okay well, anyhow I'm really happy with that uh, with the um, rotatable dipole so I hope you enjoy this hope it encourages others to build things and uh, make measurements and if you ever you know run across these old GR instruments pick them up if you love this stuff, I do, because they're just magnificent instruments. Thanks for watching.